Peace, my name is Haven Bullets and today I, I'm gonna bring you this video and I would like to say to the people that I know I've been slacking because it's like, you know, I I just haven't been, my heart hasn't even been into it. You know, I've been dealing with a lot of stuff. I got other things going on in my life. So I've been slacking, but now I have gotten a call to arms and I feel like I have to do this more than ever. Like, this is more important that I deal with this than anything I have ever dealt with in the past. This is this the people need me now to be the MVP more than they ever needed me to be the MVP before. So here I go. Now, as you can see, family, I'm gonna be letting you listen to a two and a half minute clip from Professor Black Truth. He's a DOS fuckboy now, and I'm about to break him down completely. I've been told people stop fucking with him because he was classes and he was on some blacks versus niggas shit. But now he on some DS. D O L S whatever fuckboy shit too. So he gotta go. But I'm gonna just break him a new one real quick. Here we go, family. Oh, you got somebody who's descended from America's slaves? Well, these guys are a problem. On the other hand, you got some biracial chump with a Kenyan father who didn't even stick around. Well, he's all right. Because, you know, we know that he's not gonna be holding a grudge about that whole slavery thing. It's a political operation. These immigrants being brought in, particularly the foreign-born black immigrants being brought in, these guys are part of that political plan, whether they wish to, to, to admit to that or not. And while not every single one of them's on board with it, let's be bluntly honest here, most of them are. And no, you are not going to tell me that I need to go ahead and sift through every single one. This is not me necessarily making some unjust generalization. That's pattern recognition because we've been seeing it across the board, not just in the Deep South, not just in the Midwest, not just in the East Coast, not just the West Coast, but it's been across the board. Now, much of that has been because white supremacy gets to vet whoever they let in. So they make sure you got on the tap dance shoes and that you make sure you got an empty plate so you can be so you're advertising. I am looking for butter biscuits. Will tap dance for butter biscuits? Okay, we get that. But another part of it happens to be there are some inherent issues that some of these foreign-born blacks have before they even show up. A little bit of insecurity. A little bit of, dare I say it, inferiority complex. Because if you look at who has defined what the global consciousness thinks of as black for the last 150 years, it's been just one group of people the descendants of America's slaves. That's who it is. Nobody else. Name for me one Bra Afro-Brazilian of note. Yeah, Brazil's got more black people than anywhere else outside of Africa, but name them for me. And yes, there are plenty of Africans who are in India, but can you name any for me? Can you give me any names? And when it comes to Africa itself, basically you only know Nelson Mandela. That's it. If you're an African scholar who actually looks at history, you might be able to name Haile Selassie and a couple others, but let's be honest here. The ones that you're naming are dead. And many of them, the only time, the last time that anybody mentioned them was like 100 years ago. Now, what you heard there, family, was this man, he was saying some things about how some foreign-born blacks come to America, some, very few, and they're a little bit jealous or they feel slighted or envious about black people in America or angry or whatever was info and there's some truth to that but it's misplaced and they kind of don't understand what is what and who is who and some of them are just enemies but very few not like what he was trying to make it seem but what we will get into is about this notion of them being jealous of DOS culture and let me say for the record there's no such thing as DOS culture there's only black culture that comes out of America and black culture is just that black. It has nothing to do with whether you were a descendant of slave of a slave, whether you was born here, not born here, light skin, dark skin, mix has nothing to do with that. They are trying to co op history. They are engaging in historical negation. Trying to co op the history of black people in America who would never fuck with them. Not a day in their life. And they know it. And I'm gonna show you that right now because all the culture that black people in America put out that everybody loves that make us like quote unquote the shining city on the hill. Most of that culture was brought to America by immigrants 
who gave it to black people in America and then we took it and put and, and, and put it out to the rest of the world for the other black people around the world. It was one hand washed, the other both washed the face. It was never meant to be, oh, we better than everybody, we superior to everybody. Because again, most of what it even means to be a black American was created by immigrants, black immigrants, or people who are descended from immigrants. And we're gonna get into that right now. Let me show you something, family. Who is this family? His name is Martin Delaney. You wouldn't be, he wouldn't be considered DOS. Even though he was born in America, according to your fuckboy definition, he's not DOS. And I wanna say one thing and one thing before I continue with this video. Do not come here saying, well, because I know a lot of people gonna watch this video and say, well, that's not my definition of DOS. Bullshit, don't, don't come here with that. This is Yvette Carnell's Tone Talks, Anthony Moore's movement, Antonio Moore's movement. Anybody who pushing DOS is pushing their movement. And I'm going off based on their definition. You cannot join somebody else's organization and then think you're going to create your own definitions for what they stand for and keep it to yourself while still promoting their stuff. Because guess what? If people come in, going to want to talk about what is DOS about, they're going to talk to those three. They're not going to come talk to you. And when you promote it, you're promoting them, no matter what you think you're promoting in your head. Now let's get back to this. This brother right here, he is considered the father of black nationalism. The father of black nationalism. This is him. This is the man who during the Civil War went to Abraham Lincoln. When Abraham Lincoln told Frederick Douglass, I will uh, create black um, regiments, but there will be no black officers. He went to Abraham Lincoln and screamed on him and let him know that that's not going down like that. And Abraham Lincoln buckled under the pressure and not only said, okay, they can be black officers, but made him the first black officer. Not only was he the first black officer, he was the first field officer. He was the first black person to reach the rank of major. And on top of that, he was the highest ranking officer in the Civil War for black people. He was the highest ranking black officer. He basically defined the whole concept that black people need to be independent. Black people need their own. The whole idea that we can't even be, be relying on them, we got to do for self. Him. Father of black nationalism. Not this fake shit that y'all be doing on YouTube, but real black nationalism. Let's continue. James Johnson. Now, before I continue, this is another one who was born in America but wouldn't be considered DOS because he has some Caribbean ancestry. That's right, if you have any foreign black ancestry, you can't be DOS, even if you was born here, even if you have quote unquote DOS ancestry, it's not enough. It, and don't come here and say, well, you can still be DOS if you have, if you was born here or your your mother was born here, your fault. no. I got it from the horse's mouth of the people who created the movement, if you, have any foreign black ancestry, you can't be you can't claim DOS. No matter if you was born in America, no matter how long you lived in America, no matter how long they lived in America. Doesn't matter. You can't claim DOS. Even Tariq Nashi was attacking Roland Martin for having Haitian ancestry, even though it was his grandparents on his father's side who were Haitian. He still attacked them. And everybody knows Roland Martin's mother's side is from America. Doesn't matter. You can't, you're not DOS. Well, let's get into this. This brother right here, James Johnson, he's so important because he's basically the father of the Harlem Renaissance. Not, we're not even going to deal with the importance of his civil rights work. We're just going to deal with the stuff that he did for black people to create black culture, which black people sent around the world, which made black people in America so popular. The Harlem Renaissance. He basically started the Harlem Renaissance. He was not only the one who was put bringing the the artists together, but he was the one letting people be letting it be known that there was even art going on, and was preaching to the people, black people, the importance of valuing black art produced by black people, 
And he created such an environment in, in Harlem that it made black people, not from just from all around the country, but all around the world, flock to Harlem to put their talents on display. That made the Harlem Renaissance what the Harlem Renaissance is and what it what it was and what it is today to the people because it's still living on in all of us to this day he helped put that culture out there no him no Harlem Renaissance period right here family this is Claude McKay another very important person to the Harlem Renaissance basically he's basically one of the members of what we could even call the Trinity of the Harlem Renaissance not only did he do important work because he's a Jamaican immigrant he wasn't born in America he came from Jamaica not only did he do important work on the civil rights front but he helped create the sense of black milit some black militancy he was the one who coined the phrase Red Summer when white people were running around the entire country killing and attacking and robbing and stealing from black people he was the one who gave the battle cry for black people to stand up for themselves in his epic sauna if we should die and i'm gonna let you hear it because it's not even a minute long i'll be back family if we must die let it not be like hogs hunted and penned in an inglorious spot while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs making their mock at our cursed lot. If we must die, oh let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us though dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us show brave, and for their thousand blows deal one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave? Like men will face the murderous, cowardly pack. Pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. And not only did he write that, he was boots on the ground, helping to organize the people to resist that. He organized, he, he, he used every tool at his dis, um, disposal. He basically was that era's Martin Luther King. Yes. And again, his message went global around the world. His um they people even said that Winston Churchill even quoted his quoted if we must die. Again, one of the reasons that black people so known around the world get so much praise is not some fantasy DOS fuckboy where you just had a bunch of descendants of quote unquote slaves, uh, not quote unquote slaves, excuse me, but descendants of slaves sitting around just creating high culture while everybody else, all the other black people around the world was just sit, squiddling in their, dump, their thumbs, sitting around looking stupid. That's what a white supremacist talking point that Professor Black Truth was trying to put out there. Herbert Harrison, considered the father of black radicalism, the one who, who, told, who helped motivate the people and rally the people to put up resistance to their oppression, to not just sit there and wallow, wallow in self-pity. He was, he was called also the black Socrates, because people consider him the smartest black man of this era, period. And that was by his contemporaries, people who was there on the ground with him. He, they considered him the smartest of them all. Even though he hated Christianity, I don't know if he was an atheist, but I know he hated Christianity. But that's not a part of this video. Don't come here with that. The whole notion that we need to come together, fight back in the way that we understand it today. A lot can be said that it comes from this man. Maybe not all of it, but a lot of it. Again, he wasn't born in America. A.J. Rogers. A.J. Rogers, he wasn't born in America, but he came to America. He wrote this book right here, From Superman to Men, challenging the notion that black people were inferior. 
and showing and proving that there was no scientific evidence to back up quote unquote scientific racism. None whatsoever. And he also dealt with history. He's the reason why I even took this. This, this was a black civilization. That was a black this one. This one, that one. A.J. Rogers. All that comedic stuff that y'all be promoting to the whole world. A.J. Rogers. This one was a, black people in this part of history. That part of history. This, this, that. A.J. Rogers. A.J. Rogers. But, you know, he wasn't born in America, so... Yeah. Arturio Alfonso Schoensberg, or also known as Arthur Schoensberg. The granddaddy of black history. He sparked everybody's mind, including Carter G. Woodson, who is considered the father of black history. He's the reason Carter G. Woodson even made... Negro History Week that turned into hit Negro History, I mean Black History Week that turned into Black History Month. The thing that has, that black people in America has exported to the world. With February come around, people see that as the Black Month. Where other countries have even named February as a Black History Month. That's right. Because of this man right here. Because of him. The man who worked, if I'm not mistaken, he worked at the post office. And used his money that he got from his 9 to 5 at the post office to buy a bunch of black history. Black history books, slave narratives. He was he was in Harlem during the Harlem Renaissance buying art, supporting the local artists. Real group economics. Not that fake shit that y'all talk about where y'all give niggas like Tariq your money. And then he turn around and put it in his pocket and take his white mother-in-law all around the world. Oh yeah, we're going to deal with that too. And then, and then when you say something about how come you're not actually putting this money back in the community, he, he accused you of pocket watching and called you broke and dusty. And then it'll be like, well, I gave out turkeys at Thanksgiving. Like he think he's Nino Brown or something like that. But anyway, we're going to get back to Shawnsburg. Shawnsburg is the reason why black people in America even know that they are more than the descendants of slaves. Before him, all you were was a descendant of a slave. The reason you know, let me say that again. The reason you know that you are more than a descendant of a slave is because of Arthur Schoensberg. Period. If you know anything other than black people were slaves, it's because of Arthur Schoensberg. Period. Again, the reason why we know that we are more then the descendants of slaves is because of this man. But he was born in Puerto Rico. So, you know, he we can't honor him because he's not DOS. Henry Sylvester Williams, the man who put together the first Pan-Africanist Conference. The Pan-Africanist Conference that, you, that brought black people from all over the world together. The conference that W.E.B. Du Bois attended that inspired him to do the Pan-Africanist um, Congress to even adopt the term Pan-African. That's right. Remember, black people have racial consciousness and this is one of the reasons that, that helped submit that racial consciousness in us. Right here. This man. But what well, we not supposed to celebrate him or congratulate him for you helping to unify black people all around the world, something that black people have continued to do in America, again, that we learned from him, to put together organizations to go travel and go meet up with black people to work together for a common cause. Something that black people in America are so famous for. So we not supposed to honor him for the act like he don't exist because he's not quote unquote DOS. Uh huh. I hear you. And what about Marcus Garvey? Marcus Messiah Garvey. Come on now. All you weak ass niggas screaming this DOS shit. Waving the red, black, and green around. Sit the fuck down. Oh, that rhyme. I gotta say that again. All you weak ass D niggas around screaming DOS. Dad, I forgot what I said. I don't care. But sit the fuck down. Waving the red, black, and green around talking about DOS. 
fuck fuck immigrants they stealing from us waving the red black and green around talking this America stuff got Yvette Carnell draped in the stars and stripes talking about this is ours come on man y'all gotta stop this gotta come to an end it gotta come to an end now so we gotta throw away the red, black, and green. Remember, this is the these colors represent black people, not just in America, but globally. And this was brought to us by Marcus Garvey. And don't come here telling me what you think about Marcus Garvey. I don't care. Deal with the issue. Uh, because we're dealing with this whole notion that black Americans are so successful. I mean, quote unquote, deal with us is so successful and have set the standard for what it means to even be black globally. And this whole notion that we created everything and it's every, all the other black people just sitting around like little hoes waiting for us to give them direction. Cindy Portier. I know Cindy Portier. I, I know this is some bullshit right here. D.O.S. The man who defined black male acting. The man who not opened the door, not blew the door off the hinges. For black male actors, future black male actors, globally, that show that black people can be in roles that's not stereotypical and not be out here stepping, stepping and fetching and cooning and buffooning and acting a damn fool. They could be in respectable roles that had meaning. Cindy Portier pushed it forward. He made that happen. He, like I said, he didn't open the doors. He knocked them off the hinges. No Cindy Portier, no Denzel, no quality roles for just nobody. For, like whoever you want to name, all, all in the shadow of Cindy Portier. But Cindy, they want us to throw you away because you're not DOS and they want to claim your accomplishments for some fuckboy DOS movement. Let's continue on. Who is this on the screen? This is DJ Cool Hurt. Who is DJ Cool Hurt? He's the founding father of hip hop. That's right, hip hop. The mo the thing that is pushing it forward for black people right now in America that, that has us basically, again, on the shiny city on the hill where everybody knows us in our culture and is global is because of DJ Cool Hurt. DJ Cool Hurt is a Jamaican. He came to America when he was like 13 years old. DJ Cool, every time you watch any documentary talking about how hip hop started, people always talk about, no matter who you talk to, the importance of Jamaicans, about how Jamaicans set it all off, Jamaican culture. Because if you actually look at hip hop, it is basically just Americanized dance hall. Especially in the beginning, it's just Americanized dance hall. Dance hall is a, is a Jamaican um, form of music. Some of y'all might just call it reggae because y'all think every all music coming from West in, from the West Indies is reggae, but dance hall. It's just Americanized dance hall. He brought it here. And everybody followed behind him. But we supposed to throw him in the garbage too and pretend that this is some DOS invention and that, again, all other black people who do hip-hop, you're just following behind black people in America because you ain't got no swag or no culture of your own. Let's keep it going. Who is this on the screen? Oh, no. Oh, no. That's Stokely Carmichael. Stokely. They telling us we got to get rid of you. Stokely Carmichael, the man who invented the Black Power era. He started the Black Power movement. He's the one who popularized the phrase Black Power. So I guess y'all niggas can't say Black Power no more. We got to throw away Black Power. And I'm talking about real Black Power, not that fake shit that y'all niggas be doing. I'm talking about real black power, that black power that Jagger Edgar Hoover saw Stokely Carmichael and said, this might be the black messiah I prophesied to come. That black power, the black power of the Black Panthers, who made him an honorary, their honorary um, leader. Because without Stokely Carmichael, there'd be no Black Panthers. And I'm talking about the real Black Panthers. The ones that moved and made the government want to change laws. Those Black Panthers. That's right. You got to throw away Black Power. Got to 
Black Power was done. It's in the garbage, family. Stokely Carmichael ain't DOS. He, you know he came from the Caribbean? So we got to throw away Black Power. Oh, no. Who this? Who is this? That's Detroit Red? That's the Honorable Al Shabazz? Oh, no, Malcolm. We got to throw you away, too. I know them DS or DOS fuckboys didn't know that. Malcolm got Caribbean ancestry. His mother's from the Caribbean. You from the Caribbean. You not DOS. Oh no. We gotta throw Malcolm away. And I and I I want any DOS fuckboy to, to, to answer this. Cause then you know I'm gonna make the video about how Malcolm X would never fuck with Yvette Carnell. Cause she tried to claim Malcolm X sounded and she tried to be slick and say, well, yeah. The way he lived his life, you would think he wouldn't be down with this DOS movement. But if you saw, if he saw how things change, he would be DOS. He would be promoting this movement. No, he wouldn't because he knows his mother came from the Caribbean. So we got to throw away Malcolm now. See, this is why this is a fuck boy movement. People think I'm being childish by calling it a fuck boy movement. But that's exactly what it is. It's a fuck boy movement meant to divide black people. Black people in America has never defined themselves like that. That's not what it means to be black in America. Like I keep telling you, identity does not work in America the same way it works in other countries. Point blank period. We have never had any type of fuckboy DOS movement where we have segregated ourselves from other groups of black people. Period. Because if we did, we wouldn't have all this greatness that I showed you. The reason why immigrants even came here, they was coming here to even fuck with black people because we were so open. And that's how we were so blessed to get so, such great minds. To come here and push it forward for all of us. Because we didn't behave in a DOS, DO, whatever the fuck, fuck boy manner. We never try to make people feel uncomfortable telling people that they got to follow behind us. We got the whole country. None of that gay shit that y'all niggas is on. None of that fuck boy shit that y'all talking about. And there's plenty more people that I could have put on this list. Some known, some unknown. Trust me. Because I've been rejuvenated. The MVP is back. I'm, I'm, the era, the, like I said, MVP season starts now. And I'm going to end this video right here. Like, share, subscribe, drop me a comment, tell me what you think. Make sure you share this video. This is important that you share this video. Make sure. Even if you don't share the video, if you get into a conversation with some DOS fuckboy, make sure you bring up the points that I brought up in this video. Especially you try to do that bullshit that Professor Black Chu tried to do, making it seem, again, promoting a racist white stere stereotypical point that somehow black people in America are better than all other black people because we actually create and do stuff and we define what it means to be black globally while all the other black people are just sitting on their ass doing nothing. And again, I'm going to end this video right here. Like, share, subscribe. Drop me a comment. Um, if you appreciate what I did here, donate. Don't donate. I don't care. Do whatever you feel. And on that note, family, peace.